Okay, so in this next portion of the class, I want to give a very brief sketch of the syntax of English. So we're actually going to develop a relatively simple context-free grammar that captures some really important constructions and rules in English. Um, but I want to emphasize here that we're really just going to scratch the surface. Building a full grammar for English is uh, a pretty formidable task, and there are many, many, many uh, issues that we won't cover. Just to emphasize how formidable a task building a grammar of English might be, this is a book. I brought up the product details from Amazon. It's a book called A Comprehensive Grammar of the English Language. It's a very famous book about English grammar. It is close to 2,000 pages in length. It weighs uh, almost five pounds. It's a large book. It is uh, 10 inches on this dimension, 8.4 inches on this dimension, and uh, over two inches thick. And so this book tries to document uh, the grammar of English, and it is huge. In spite of the size of this book, if you were to take a randomly drawn sentence from, say, a newspaper or from a book you were reading, it's quite, li quite likely you'd come across a construction that wasn't covered in this book. So in some sense, it's a monumental task to build a grammar of English. But let's proceed with this idea of building up um, a first attempt at a context-free grammar that, that covers some really important constructions. OK, so firstly, um, let's talk about some very basic parts of speech. These parts of speech uh, conventions are taken from something called the Brown Corpus. This is a corpus from the early 1960s, where Actually, a group of researchers took a pretty diverse set of sentences from a, a wide variety of genres in English and annotated their parts of speech. So this is quite likely the first part of speech tagging corpus. And the tagging conventions have been used in many other corpora since that. So if we look at nouns, we actually subdivide these uh, nouns into a few different subtypes. So we have singular nouns. We use the tag NN for a singular noun. Plural nouns, we use the tag NNS for a plural noun. Um, these are things like telescopes, houses, or buildings. Singular nouns are things like man, dog, or park. And finally, proper nouns, we use NNP. This is the part of speech tag for a proper noun. These are names, things like Smith, Gates, and IBM, almost always capitalized words in English. Moving on, a second very important part of speech is DT, which stands for a determiner. So determiners are words like the, or a, or some, or every. Determiners usually come before nouns. And so I can have strings like the man, or a man, or some men where I see a determiner uh, before a noun. And then finally, we have adjectives. So JJ is used to refer to an adjective. An adjective could be a word like red, green, or large, or idealistic. And adjectives often come between determiners and nouns. So I can have strings like um, the red telescope would be one example where I have a determiner then an adjective, then a noun. OK, so I'm next going to start to build up a simple grammar for what are called noun phrases. And a noun phrase has this category NP. And let me show you how these rules work to give us um, several different noun phrases in this language. OK, so the rules over here have parts of speech rewriting as various words. For example, this rule says that uh, the part of speech NN, remember that's a singular noun, can be a box. Or we can have NN rewriting as car, or mechanic, or pigeon. We have two words for determiners. DT can rewrite as the, or a. And then I have a few adjectives over here, fast, metal, idealistic, clay. And we have uh, JJ, this adjective symbol, rewriting as each of those words. 
Okay, so let's see how we can construct phrases of type NP. And let's start with a very simple one. So I can use this rule here to say that a noun phrase consists of a determiner followed by a category called an N bar. I refer to this as N bar. It's an N with a bar above it. And we'll see soon what role this plays. Um, a determiner can rewrite, for example, as the. Uh, an N bar can rewrite in various ways, and we'll come to these other rules later. But for now, let's just use this first simplest rule, where an N bar rewrites as a singular noun. And then finally, an, uh, the NN, the singular noun, can rewrite, for example, as car. OK, so that's the first very simple example of a noun phrase corresponding to the car, and it has this kind of internal structure. So a noun phrase will generally consist of some main noun with some material before it, some words often called pre-modifiers, which come before that word. In this case, we have one modifier, which is the determiner of the. And under this grammar I've shown you here, a noun phrase is always composed of a determiner followed by a category uh, called an N bar. OK, so let's try a second example. So again, I have NP goes to N bar, sorry, determiner N bar. And now I'm going to make use of this rule, which says an N bar can be formed by an adjective followed by an N bar. So I'll use this rule. And similarly, I can use N bar goes to N. And then I can say um, JJ goes to fast and NN goes to car. OK, so what do I have here? I have a structure for the noun phrase, the fast car. And notice that critically, I've used this rule which says that I can create an N bar by an adjective followed by another N bar. OK, um, we can go a step further. And it, it's important, we'll see how this rule, N bar goes to JJ, N bar, is recursive in that it can be repeatedly applied. So let's give a third structure. So again, I have this rule at the top. But now I'm going to apply this adjective rule twice. And so I can have things like the fast red car. OK, and you can see how you could repeatedly apply this adjective rule. So you can get multiple adjectives before a uh, noun, which are, are all modifiers to that noun. OK, so that's an example of how we can use this rule here. Let's move on a little, a little bit. And let's now look at how this rule can be uh, applied. So I have a rule saying an N bar can be formed by a singular noun followed by an N bar. So let's give some examples. So again, I can have NP goes to determiner N bar at the top of this. We have there. And now I'm going to use N bar goes to NN N bar. So that's where I've used this rule here. And here's an example of how this rule might be used if I have a car factory. This is a factory that makes cars. You notice that I have car acting as a pre-modifier to factory. So it's almost in the same position as an adjective, but this is definitely a noun. Um, but it's a rather similar construction to the one we just saw with adjectives. OK. Um, moving on, let's finally look at this rule here, which says that an N bar can actually be formed by an N bar followed by another N bar. Let me give you one example of how this rule can be applied. So again, at the top, we always have NP goes to determiner N bar. And now I'm going to make use of this rule. So maybe I again have factory down here. OK. Um, but now I'm going to make use of this rule. So let me write the structure, and then we can go over it. 
So what I have here is a string that says the fast car factory. Okay, so this is a factory that makes fast cars. And now I have this entire n bar fast car as a pre-modifier to factory. So I've replaced car here with this entire pre-modifier fast car. Okay, and, and that itself has the category of n bar. So you can see how this n bar category is being used as an intermediate category within these noun phrases. Um, we always see n bar following a determiner, and in addition, n bar can be used uh, further down within these trees.